Tonight, a new Miss Troy is crowned. Plus, find out a way you can help improve some local children's holiday. From the High Definition Digital Production Center on the Troy campus, with news from Troy University locations around the world, this is Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News. Hello and welcome to Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News for November 4th, 2013. I'm Jamarlo Phillips. And I'm Christina Cook. Thank you for joining us this evening. Well, 13 young women competed to be the next Miss Troy University over the weekend, but only one could take the crown. Santila Wilson introduces us to the new Miss Troy. To many people, Saturday was just a normal day. But on Saturday, one Troy University student's life was changed greatly. Brandi White, a sophomore from Dothan, Alabama, took home the title as Miss Troy University 2014. I'm in, still in shock right now, but I just love Troy so much, and it's great to be a representation of this school. White is also an elementary education major and will represent Troy in the Miss Alabama pageant in June. But before she steps on stage to compete for the title for Miss Alabama, White will be making several appearances and raising awareness for her platform, which is working with the arts. It's transforming lives through the arts, and it has to do with a program I started back home in Dothan, where I teach not underprivileged kids about the arts, and it really helps them get their self-confidence up and helps them in all aspects of their life. Thirteen contestants vied for the chance to be Miss Troy University on Saturday, and some contestants compete in pageants years before winning a title, but that's not the case for White. It's a true shock. I've worked so hard, so I'm really glad it all paid off, but all the girls were amazing. I'm just truly blessed right now. As White prepares to represent Troy in the Miss Alabama pageant, the former Miss Troy has a piece of advice for her. The best advice I can give her is just to remain true to herself, and while she's remaining true to herself, she'll be able to reach out to other people and maybe affect other people and be a positive role model, because that's who Miss Troy University is, in a sense. And she is a role model for women, not only of her age, but for younger women as well. So for her just to do that and to be Miss Troy in the best way that she can be. Shantia Wilson, Troy Trojan Vision News. As winner of Miss Troy, White receives a one-year tuition scholarship to Troy. Although it's just the start of November, the Student Involvement Center and a number of student organizations are coming together to make a difference in a child's life for the Christmas holidays. Troy's Office of Student Involvement is collecting toys for the TOTS for the TOTS program. Starting tomorrow and running through December 2nd, people can drop off unwrapped toys in the SGA office in room 215 of the Trojan Center. The toys will go to underprivileged children in Pike and Houston counties. Organizers hope to top them out or, excuse me, organizers hope to top amount that was collected last year. Last year we had about six full boxes. Each of those boxes weighed about 40, 40 pounds, so that's about 240 pounds. So our goal this year is to get up at, at least to 300 pounds worth of uh, unwrapped gifts. And once again, if you are interested in donating to Toys for Tots, you can drop off an, un an unwrapped toy at the Student Government Association office in Trojan Center Room 215. Well, Christina Shore University has a diverse international student population, and many of those students' groups like to share a bit of their culture with their American neighbors. You know, that's right, Jamarlo, and this weekend, members of Troy University's Indian student population had the chance to celebrate and share one of their biggest holidays. Jamie Day Matthews has the story. While some Troy University students are traveling to Dothan for the National Peanut Festival, other Troy students attended a different kind of festival this weekend. This is for the Diwali. Uh, Diwali is known as like colors. Uh, it's it's a, like colorful festival in India, which we usually celebrate with uh, decorating the home with lights and we, we find the crackers. So this is the festival of Diwali. The Diwali Festival of Lights is an event held once a year in India. The Troy University Indian Student Association hosted the celebration Saturday on Troy's campus and seemed to be pleased with the turnout. We decorated uh, tickets for this event. There were no turnout, but today there were around 20 to 25 people waiting at the door for tickets. So you can think about it, how, uh, how grand this event is going, going on. The students were happy with the turnout, and someone you may not expect seemed to enjoy yourself as well. well 
The guests have enjoyed the Indian Student Association's hard work to express their culture through a variety of dance performances, music, and food. We, we, we specially prepared the food, uh, food no, with desserts, sweet, that is really the delicious food for the Diwali. I always have like huge number of sweets. The Indian Student Association has another event planned in February. All students will be invited and tickets will be sold at a later date. This is Jamie Day Matthews, Troy Trojan Vision News. Diwali, also known as the Festival of Lights, is a very important holiday in Hindu culture and is an official national holiday in a number of nations. And now taking a look at news from around the state. In Mobile, U.S. Coast Guard officials say they rescued three people and a dog from a vessel that was taken on water off the Alabama coast in the Gulf of Mexico. The Coast Guard sector received a radio call yesterday that the sailing vessel's second chance was taken on water about 50 miles from Dolphin Island. And in Flights are back on schedule one day after a note found in a restroom led to diverted flights and a two-hour evacuation of hundreds of passengers. Birmingham shuttles are worth International Airport's website today show that flights are arriving and departing as scheduled. And authorities say a six-month investigation in Athens has culminated in arrest warrants for 40, 43 drug suspects. Authorities say 31 of the suspects were under arrest as of yesterday afternoon. Police say they seized crack, cocaine, marijuana, guns, $8,000 in cash, and a malnourished pit bull in the investigation. And still to come on Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News, the Sun Belt Cross Country Championships were this were in town over the weekend, and Danielle Percival will have the full recap ahead when she joins us in sports. Now Danielle Percival joins us with a look at sports. Now Danielle, you know we didn't really have a lot of sports action going on here this weekend, but Troy's cross country team actually did play host to a very big championship uh, that took place over the weekend. Well, that's right, Christina. No football in action this weekend, but cross country was the big event on campus, and it's one of two championship events that Troy University will play host to this month. We'll get into that more details on that here in sports. As Christina mentioned, Saturday morning, Troy University was the site of the 2013 Sunbelt Cross Country Championships, and it was one of the final outings of the season for the Trojan Cross Country teams. Saturday morning, the Trojan cross country teams competed in the conference championships and had the home field advantage. The women's team finished the event in eighth place while the men were in ninth. And according to head coach Jeff Jenkins, the top performers for the Trojans came as no surprise. We were led by Enoch and Julia again, which was good to see them stepping up and, and do what they've been doing all season long and, and since the start of their career here at Troy. Julia had a great race. She put herself in position to be all conference Unfortunately, with the new teams added in our conference, it made it difficult for her to be in that top 15. She did finish 22nd. Enoch uh, ran a little bit slower time than we ran at Cocho. He was in the race in, in position to be all conference all the way up into the last two miles, and he just really fell fell off. And I think you know it's just his summer training really caught up with him. He didn't really have the fitness to to make it through the whole race in this late in the season. The Trojans ran this course in October at the Cocho Invitational and many athletes saw improvements over their previous times. Our strategy in this race was, was to run point to point, and what I mean by that is you're not necessarily trying to go from the start to the finish, and you're not thinking about the whole race, you're breaking it down into little sections. So the first thing I told them was to get the mile in a good place. After they get to the mile, I told them to focus on the 2K, then the 3K, then the two mile, and so on and so forth, all the way through the race, and just to get to that next point, and I think everybody did a pretty good job of that. Playing host to championship events gives Troy University the opportunity to showcase its facilities. And Director of Athletics John Hartwell believes that can be beneficial in several ways. Not only do you have you know coaches from the other institutions, but administrators and certainly the student athletes that may not have been to campus before, and that, you know they'll go back to their campuses and say, "Wow, you know, look at the facilities that Troy has." And you know, even from a recruiting standpoint because some of these uh, men and women have younger brothers and sisters who may be cross-country runners and they may say hey you know what a beautiful place and certainly the weather cooperated with us today we have chamber of commerce weather so uh, you, you know all in the big picture it's a great event for us and while events like this may be a recruiting tool Jenkins says this championship was a building block for his underclassmen. You know, for these freshmen on the men's side uh, six freshmen in the top seven on the women's side five freshmen in the top seven it's good for them to get the experience of this caliber of a meet and to see what it's like to be running a Sunbelt Championships like they're going to be doing for the next three years. So, you know, right now we're 52 weeks away from the 2014 Sunbelt Championships, and that's what we're going for. 
Troy will again be the host site for a Sunbelt Championship later this month when the Volleyball Championships are held in Trojan Arena. And speaking of volleyball, the Trojan volleyball team was unable to secure a win on its Louisiana road trip over the weekend. The Trojans fell to the Ragin' Cajuns 3-0 at Louisiana Lafayette on Friday night. The Trojans then went 0-2 against the Louisiana teams on Saturday afternoon when they fell to the Warhawks 3-2. The loss to the Warhawks is the sixth straight for Troy, with five of the six coming on the road. The Trojans now return home for three straight, with just five matches remaining in the regular season. Troy will play host to South Alabama on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Though the football team was not in action on Saturday, they were still at work this weekend, preparing for another Thursday night game this week. So far this year, the Trojans are 0-2 in midweek contests, with losses to Arkansas State and the Halloween loss to Louisiana Monroe. But there is a difference this time around. It won't be a short week for the team. The Trojans are playing back-to-back -back Thursday night games, and quarterback Corey Robinson says it's just another game week. It's just like a Saturday to Saturday game. You know, it's just we get to, like I said, uh, you know, get to leave a couple of days early and go play on a Thursday night, which you know it's fun, man, and get to be on TV again. So hopefully we can go out there and do a better, uh, do a better job this week uh, against Lafayette on TV. Kickoff for Thursday's game will be at 6.30 with the game televised on ESPNU. And the Trojans' next two games will be on the U. Game time for the Ole Miss game has been set for 11 a.m. That game will also be on ESPNU. So, Jamarlo, Christina, the cross-country team able to put on a great meet at home, have the entire conference come and see what Troy University has to offer. We heard from Director of Athletics John Hartwell earlier talking about how great that is for Troy University being able to, to be represented on that high level. And, you know, the opportunity comes again in just a few weeks with the volleyball championships at Troy. So, you know, it's a great day to be a Trojan. Right. I definitely agree. Um, you know, I'm just so proud of our entire athletic department. Absolutely. Right. It's, it's great. Yeah. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you, guys.